All right. Welcome back. I know we're just enjoying this music, man. It's just so chill. Such a chill vibe. We got to get, get away serious. From that. Yeah, that's it. We need hype up. We need to, grand yeah, finals. Maybe I should change up the music a little <laughs> bit. As chill as it is, it might not fit we this necessarily. The, uh, the, best. I don't know. The, the old Monster Cat that had the the hype beats. Maybe. Uh, I love I love me some. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna hook that up after the after this game here. Uh, speaking of that, we got game number two coming at you. Alliance versus Hersey. Of course, Alliance yeah. up one game to nothing here in this best of five grand finals. The draft is underway. And same, right? I believe picks, so. I believe so. It was a well. Visage next, yeah. Yeah, which will not be a Visage next. I can only imagine. I would be <laughs> shocked if they pick it again. That would be a little surprising. Um, I, yeah, it was Murano first too, right? I Yeah, I believe it was your Spirit Murano opening. Yeah, again, yeah, so the exact same draft Murano. Actually, so they picked... First Sprint, then Murano. This time they picked Murano then. Or okay, so you know what? You're right, guys. <laughs> As always, you're it's right. Completely different. <laughs> no. Tiny no. second pick. So they do swap it up. A little more of a standard, I, I think you could say, pick. Yeah, this feels a bit better, a bit less, you know, directly countered by anything. Yeah. I think they had this idea that Visage is a hero that they have Daxak, who's a bit of a Visage specialist. You put him on it, give him a good game. You also second pick it so you can ban immediately. It's like you pick Visage here and you ban two counters of it. But there's there's so many heroes that are good against Visage. And uh, I think you really need to be fourth and fifth picking that hero or having like a draw or something to it really enable it. So tiny, flexible, support, core, any lane. Any roll, no problem. I'm trying to remember if I uh, see so pull it up real quickly. Game one, did they ban Centaur on Alliance side the first game? They did. Okay, so Centaur being banned, I yeah, that's uh interesting. I, I, I imagine Afterlife has been planted a bit recently. Yeah, Furzy have liked their Centaur. That's huh. I'm trying to think they how did, much. Yeah. So they played it four times in the last month in 104. Okay, uh, and I record. think in their very recent games they were picking it. Like just in this we play tournament, um, I cast a series of theirs uh, <coughs> two days ago when they played in the semifinals against TFT, I believe it was. Okay, and they played Centaur at least one, maybe a couple of those games. They picked a game one in the previous series too against Alliance. Yeah, right, there you go. Yeah, they, I'm looking at here, they're big on the Centaur right now. It seems. Oh God! Well, Alliance picked Puck. That was their problem. What? <laughs> Why yeah. did they pick Puck? And they have an AA there. Oh, jeez. What's, what's going on? Come on, guys. Let's not overreact uh, now. Yeah, let's stick to the, the Earth Spirit Moranas. This is much more stable. Um, Earth Spirit for Taiga. We get to see it again. I I don't get sick of seeing Earth Spirit. I, you could give me 50 Earth Spirit games in a row, and I'm always happy to see another. It's kind of oh, like yeah. Rubik in that way. Um, Pengalier, I want him to come back. His ultimate is so much fun to watch. Rolling Thunder, um, huh? I feel like hero design needs to go in a direction where it's... Let's design heroes that are spectator friendly. Like forget flashy. about yeah, yeah, forget about what's good for Dota and the meta and the game. Now we want pure <laughs> spectator. Uh, Cosmet. We need more cosmetics, is what you're saying in the game. Oh yeah, actually yeah. Forget adding new heroes at all. Eh? More cosmetics. There we go. <laughs> That's all we need. We need we need uh, cosmetics to like even change the appearances of the heroes. So you don't even know what hero it is anymore. Yes. I'm gonna call up Ice Rock, tell him to cancel the release of 7.20. <laughs> it was gonna be released <laughs> on uh, Friday. It's it's no longer happening, guys. Uh, we're just going to add some cosmetics instead. Need more Arcanas. Need that Arcana Rubik coming out, man. That I'm pumped for. <laughs> Don't be too now. Looks like it's so excited. Well, hey, you know it might take a little, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, as yeah. long as it turns out to be awesome in the end, which I'm That's sure true. it will be. I, I, yeah, Io Arcana, I think lived up to and surpassed expectations. Oh yeah, the Io. Well, Io lost the Arcana to Pudge. Pudge, yeah, yeah. You're right. yeah. and then Pudge. I, got Pudge his. Arcana was pretty. I thought it was good. It was good, yeah. It wasn't it was bad. Good. It's just everyone was spamming it, and it's Pudge, and it's just yeah. like... Uh, I think that was more of the factor with maybe, like, you thinking it was bad. I thought it, cosmetically, just pure cosmetic, it was actually a good Arcana, okay. but because of just how it, much we see it. It's I mean. like you knew uh, no kind of was coming, and Pudge had so many cosmetics, yeah. it was you know, hard to stand out, whereas it was just suddenly like this random Io Arcana when Io has no cosmetics. And exactly. That was just insane. Loved it. That companion cube. All right, third pick eventually to happen. I suppose we're still actually on the fifth fan for Alliance. Yeah. Even. How we do? Are we we're not too far behind uh, or ahead. What is it? One fourteen. Oh, yeah, yeah it's about ten seconds. 10 seconds it looks like. Yeah. I think we're good. We're gonna ban the visage. Okay. Eventually, they will. Oh, eventually they will. Yeah. <laughs> you, we we're just talking about how one's delayed and already <laughs> spoiling picks. There uh, it is. Pop up. There's there the visage, visage ban. Now what are they picking? Crystal Maiden once again. Alliance keeping it root. Wow. Okay. Quick fix. That's a snap enigma. 
I like Enigma. I think the series being underpicked a bit. Uh, even when the Black Holes got counters in the game, whether it's Silencers, Vengers, uh, these things that cancel it, it's just eventually there'll be a Black Hole that's you know not being cancelled or you itemize with a BK beat and the Lincoln Sphere. Uh, you get your refresher, that you kill the hero that can that can counter and then you Black Hole their carry. It's just, it feels like Enigma's always uh, going to be able to get a Black Hole at some point off. And right now they do not have a BKB stopper, so something that I'm sure Alliance is going to be thinking about. But like you do, you do bring up a good point, and again, I like to reiterate that too. Every time we see an Enigma, he's not just about Black Hole. His skill set across the board is pretty strong. Yep. When you really think about it, his landing phase could potentially be very good. One of the greatest flash farmers in the game, honestly, if he has a good start, um, especially with an earlier hand of Midas. But eventual, there we go. There's that BKB stopper that we knew was coming it felt like and it's going to be a core venge again remember they ran that boxy venge last series yeah so a bit of uh the same from last game and a bit of the same from the last series so uh, is drow on ban still it is just one drow i th that looks so squishy that lineup like, yeah if they had a different support or offlaner with it i would the synergy is uh, great, but you, you are right. Yeah, that is a good so, point. It just seems so risky with how paper their lineup would be and how little team fight it would have. Uh, it, it, you'd lose the lanes because well, I, I just don't think the Drow Aura wins you lanes anymore. And then you have no team fight to back it up. Meanwhile, Furzy is going to get a fast blink on Tiny and just, I think, overrun you. But it, it, it is a possibility still. It's not completely out of the question. It just seems very high risk to me. I think Furzy's banning it, honestly. It's just still yeah, one true. of those heroes that it's like, even though you feel comfortable, let's just not worry about it. Uh, Terrorblade is the fourth pick, as okay. we see there. So Tiny still open could be a support or could be the mid lane here. TP most likely playing the hard farming carry in the safe lane or a side lane, I guess. All these terms, like, you know, we have this Dota kind of dictionary lingo. lingo. Um, you know, the off lane, the safe lane, yeah. all these things, they, they don't really apply anymore in the current meta. <laughs> it's not, the safe lane's not very safe. It's constantly changing, yeah. Um, and like the one to five rolls is like not really a one to five anymore for a lot of teams and a lot of games. It's, yeah. You know, we need new terminology, I guess, or. All right, I'll uh, wait for you to come up with that. That's, you, you know, said that's it. for people like BSJ. You know, we're going to have. The dead lane, yes. Yeah. It's on the deadline. Uh, we need Let's PSA go into to depth about that. <laughs> further, that's what people love. Further expand out Dota 2 lingo. We need Grand Grant to tell us <laughs> what the deadline is. Uh, Kunkka ban for Alliance. Um, if they potentially want to go Drow, Kunkka would have been pretty good against that. So could be leading towards that. Good against Murata, though, I suppose. Yeah, they're expecting these support tiny. Man, I, if they don't ban Drow, yeah, it's... It's going to be that tough spot for Alliance, though, because, again, you're, you're right. It's They're up one nothing though. So they, they do have that safety net of, yes, it might be them trying to cheese too much, but it could work out, and it could be an overwhelming now 2 nothing victory. Like So it's you really have to weigh the pros and cons, right? So, But will it be banned? No, it's going to be a Zeus ban. Of truth here. Spear Breaker. Spear Breaker gets picked up, and Insta-Pick Invoker. So... This gives them some more team fight. I like this. Invoker? Just... You think it's going to be Invoker? Yeah, I think it's going to be Invoker. Oh, look at that. It's yeah. Invoker. <laughs> you can tell I'm tired because I... <laughs> you keep on me, ignoring You told me 30 seconds ago to, you know, oh, you spoiled a pick. I'm like, okay. <laughs> In my head, you know, I should be like, okay, don't do it again. But no. I love Mickey Invoker. Uh, that's fun to see. But that doesn't answer the squishiness, though. Like, that still is a fairly squishy oh. lineup overall, right? But it's not as dependent on just simply right-clicking and overwhelming them either. Yeah, it's the squishiness combined with the right-click factor where it's just like, you're going to stand your ground and right-click. Invoker has burst damage, so it, having burst damage on a hero that's squishy is uh, not as bad because, yeah, you're going to kill them right away. Um, you've also just got all these big teamfight spells, the Invoker combos, something that a Drow, Marana, Venge would not have brought to the table. And you've got better lane control now because he can start throwing sun strikes around, you can set up kills in side lanes. I think overall this just seems a bit more well-rounded and also gives them a solution to the TB because once that TB got picked up, the drought pick became even worse. It's just uh, not a hero that threatens TB in any way. And that's why the, the last ban was on Zeus from Furzy, so they were expecting some kind of TB counter to be picked up. I could see strong ar arguments for both builds on Invoker, by the way, this game. I think Quas Wax, mm -hmm. the control 
would be extra nice. You know, things like like Terra Blade with the illusions overwhelming, EMP is good against that, or Tornado even. So, but at the same time, they do kind of need a right clicker. I, sp I suppose Koi could approve last game on Mirada, he could take care of that. They have a Vengeful R and everything, but is there either way you're leaning this game? Uh, I think slightly towards Exorc, but I definitely agree that both are viable. Uh, the Exor with the damage output just is going to be the build that can threaten the TP more in the mid game, but uh, Quas Wex will take longer for the Invoker to get to a point where he becomes the TP counter. I think they picked him somewhat to fill in the the shoes of countering TP. Okay, but uh, both definitely definitely possible. Uh, the Mickey Invoker going to be coming out here. Quas will be in that safe flame more than likely on Mirana, depending on some lane matchups. Afterlife, though, an Enigma. This is definitely always a fun hero to see being played. Uh, you know, again, yes. that black hole presence as a caster is uh, not many more iconic abilities than that one. Yeah, we're getting hyped for Earth Spirits and stuff. This is, you know, the the king of the caster team fights. It's not the same without Toby, though. That's all right. I'm sure. Uh, I, I believe in you, Breaking. You can do one better. I'm trying my best. Who's the Enigma upon? Is, is that uh, Tempest. Enigma? Tempest, okay. Elemental Void was the uh, <laughs> ultimate name. Doesn't have quite the ring as a black hole. Uh, too, yeah. too wordy. Yeah. Two words, <laughs> uh, a little too much. And there's the Elemental <laughs> Void. Oh, oh, you're already talking too much. The void. I hear a squeak? Yeah, get this. Faceless that. Void, the equivalent was Kronos. Uh, <laughs> and the Faceless Void in Dota has a Chronosphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would always confuse me when I first came over. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Enough of that. So, what are we looking at? Quaz level one. Looking like the Quazwex Invoker from Mickey. Is it? Okay. So, I can argue for both, and he does go the QW route, or at least the Q yep. for now. I assume it's going to be QW. Yeah. You don't go Quaz first if you're planning to go Exhort. I, exactly. I was, <laughs> that is typically the case. Top bounty rune is going to be fought over, it looks like, as Furzy do bring three heroes up here. Bottom bounty rune's being ignored. They're free for the taking. Somebody grab those Somebody poor can bounty pick runes. those up, yeah. yeah. And anyone, it's... Uh, it's up Venge is just walking across like, I'll take these three bounty runes. Okay, so it's a one for one up here, but Venge... Yeah, that's... Does he get both? Yeah, he does, both. doesn't he? He just walked over. There was no TB in the neighborhood. TB expected the huh. bottom bounty runes to be invaded, so he wasn't going to be... He, didn't he doesn't want to, want to fight. Yeah, it's it's scary until you get vision of heroes. If you go leave your tower or your lane there, Earth Spirit rolls on you. Vent stuns, Invoker Sunstrike. I mean, you don't know it's a Quas Invoker at that point. Maybe you suspect it because you didn't throw Sunstrikes level one, but you can die very easily at level one if yeah. you if you leave to go scout about your So I think he makes the right call. Again, it's not the end of the world, yeah. especially the first bounty runes. But oh, there you go. The Metamorphosis is going to be popped early. And Definitely uh, got to keep your distance against oh. that, usually. I like this, uh, Taiga instantly going to roll behind to grab the creep wave at bottom. So he sees his Metamorph and knows they can't contest last hits against the Metamorph damage, so he's going to pull a creep wave away from the That's TV. Smart. Force him to tank it under the tower and still get last hits effectively yeah. for your Vengeful. You remove the deny factor, and you're actually going to get some denies. If you make your the creep wave you steal, you meet up with the next creep wave behind the tier one. Suddenly, you're in a great scenario. This Venge, though, bottom taking a lot of damage. Just tanking these Metamorph shots. Not going to go down, but that was not a uh, HP trade whatsoever. I'm guessing he still has plenty of regen, though. And looks like he will eventually be popping himself to heal back up. But yeah, again, the Metamorphosis has now worn off, so he can be a little more confident. It's middle lane, Mickey. Oh my gosh, one auto attack. Luckily, able to stay alive there, but that was a close call. Yeah. Very skilled mid player. He's used up his entire mana pool for that. We'll be going for a bottle, it looks like. So, wanting to have that kill potential on Invoker, always important. I know it's very, very early on here, gods, but look at that CS to the left. That's uh, very <laughs> yeah. one sided in favor of Furzy this time around. It's a very telltale sign of how I think mid will go to a certain extent. Uh, that's not going to change. Bottom lane will change because the, the CS is largely because of TB using Meta, Metamorph. Yeah. But uh, the mid and the top lane, it's really the kind of the status quo in some ways. If they're winning their lane now, they will continue to win their lane harder with more points in the Eidolons. Getting a kill also helps your cause, Taiga. He tries to roll out. No way he's getting that one off. Daxak gets credit for the kill on Terrorblade, and that is first blood after all. So not only the laning phase starting strong with a creep score, they got first blood to work with that on Terrorblade. So 
Again, he was the one lane where maybe he starts changing a little bit. That, that's going to help things even more uh, now. So definitely setting themselves up in a very good spot early on. Charge middle lane. Mickey might be dead. He's going to throw the tornado. Perfect timing with the tornado. Okay, I, I'm sorry. He makes up that, that he made that look so easy. Yeah, that was a <laughs> difficult, difficult task there to time it perfectly as Spear Breaker's t uh, charging in to catch both. That's the you know, sign of some of these pros. They make those hard plays look easy sometimes. Uh, as an Evoker player, I can only dream. One day I'll get there. Probably not ever. Definitely not. I've seen Owen climb up to Divine One. <laughs> Owen's uh, Divine now, you know, props yeah, you know, to him. I, I, anyone can do it. That's true, actually. Okay, yeah, you've inspired me again. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the, the way OG inspires all the pro teams out there that yeah. you know anyone can win TI. Oh, Owen yeah. inspires all the other casters. You know, anyone can, <laughs> can climb MMR. That's very true. Middle lane again, this time tossing into the tower. That's a very good placement. As a tornado initially, but it still has a lot of distance. The Quas is regening, but it's not enough. He goes down. Boxy goes down to the bottom lane. Meanwhile, do that Terra Blade and Phoenix combo. Something tells me Terra Blade has Metamorphosis active to do so. He does. You're correct on that. Charge. Good timing with the stun. Yeah, good, good ways to cancel charge this game, but still not entirely helping them. This Spirit Break has still found a way to get involved in two kills already. How things progress from here as Alliance are in a bit of an early game hole. Not completely. We haven't out seen of that yet. Lanes, but Earlier series in the first game, they, they've always been kind of ahead in the landing phase, I feel like. Yep. So, so they can climb out. Enigma is a big part of that. And I want to touch on Enigma for a second. You know, we mentioned they do have that BKB stopper now, especially with the Vengeful. First, let's start. Do, do you think it gets a Midas? Is that still an item that we could expect Enigmas to see picked up? Or is, is Midas, as we were mentioning earlier, is it just kind of a dead item right now overall? It goes both ways. Some Enigma players completely stop getting it and get the Helm of the Dominator instead. And there are a, a, some that still get the Midas. So we'll see which kind of Enigma yeah. Afterlife is. I, I I don't think there's a yeah. obvious... There's no. I don't have an answer because I don't think the pros have an answer. Some get Midas, some don't. Yeah. With Soul Ring first for now, so we don't have an answer just yet. But Vansker, yep. five minute bounty runes, battling for it. So far, it's controlled by Alliance, and it looks like they will get a three for one once again. So the bounty runes continue to be controlled at least by Alliance in this case. As Afterlife top lane, see so he's going to get away before too much happens to him. Back to the tower. Uh, but then further, it's, you know, what's the priority on the on the Blink Dagger this game? You think does he try to get that as a follow up or is it? Not a concern. Yeah, I, I would say likely getting a pretty fast blink BKB. Okay. Uh, and then yeah, you, you've got to, you go Lincoln's probably after that for the swap. And then at that point, you can get any black hole. True. Off. So that's the ultimate combo for him. Refresher yeah. after that. Let's, yeah. Exactly. Now Refresher. That, sometimes you see Octarines for cooldown instead, depending on what kind of game it, it becomes. It's kind of so far in the future that you, you can't really commit to that like big late game item just yet anyway, so you're not going to be thinking about it too much. Uh, the Lincolns may not even become a necessary item. If you can, like, deal with the Venge in other ways, kill her off early in the fight, you can still find Black Holes even without the Lincoln. Oh, yeah. It's a very expensive item just to stop a swap. That it is, so. And at the same time, you can just get a Refresher, and then your first Black Hole gets cancelled by a swap. You Number have a second two. One. Yeah. So, I think, uh, unless you're looking at Venge with, like, an Ag Scepter and the short cooldown on Nether Swap, that's one way you can approach it. Koikva, he's stepped it up quite a bit himself. 34 and 7 now. He's similar to his last game, at least the Ring of Acula. And he's just going to wand here early on and see the progress being made. I'm sure the Maelstrom potentially going to come out too. I think now that he's got look, three points in the Star Storm, level 5, he's able to actually start farm farming the Eidolons if they're ever too far forward. So that kind of inflates his yes a bit. He's using arrows to farm the jungle. Uh, he's just being very efficient in this lane, despite the fact that Enigma has denied a lot of creeps. This is something with a Spirit Breaker, a hero that's in general going to be kind of roaming around constantly. We've seen a lot of these Nyx assassin position for us recently, too, in the same boat. They potentially could start falling behind at levels. And right now, level three and a half at seven minutes in, that's a uh, uh, massively concerning yet, but it, it's still a case that, granted, there are several other heroes in this game that are also level three, but point is, we'll keep an eye on Spirit Breaker to see how the levels progress. Yeah, he can quickly lag behind. He is lagging behind heavily in terms of his farm, if not the, not not so much the levels right now, as all supports are a bit uh, behind. 
But yeah, he's got no boots. He's a true hard five right now. He has the least farm in the game. It's a bit of a struggle, but we'll see if that changes again moving forward. It looks like he might be charging the top lane even. Yep, there we go. Marana going to be the target. The Malphus on top of that. He does have a black hole. He is going to use it, but look at Taiga. He was sitting there as if he knew the whole time that was coming. He sneaks a stop, and they want Afterlife more than Vansker, but I think they're going to have to settle for Vansker, maybe. Frostbite? He doesn't have it yet. Okay. Any charge away? Nope. They got him. At least they get the one, but yeah, Taiga again, he was just sitting there very patiently waiting for that to inevitably happen. And it, I mean, if they get the kill with the black hole there, obviously that's a great kill, but um, that's now black hole on cooldown, and they lose one themselves. That's not ideal. Yep. For Alliance, though, not having the Exo and Voca means they don't have that Sunstrike support to find kills in these sidelines, and that's partly why, you know, this lane stage is going kind of slow for them. They're not making these aggressive moves as much. They just don't have that same global kill potential on the map. Bottom, vengeful. There's a charge. This is going to be a hard getaway, or maybe not so much. He just, I guess, running works. Tiny. Can he run? He has a toss up. Can they chase him down? Make a. <laughs> Going for the ghost walk slow. Yeah, the, the ghost walk slow trying to get close enough. Yeah. <laughs> That's. It's Tiger in the end. With, the, with all of his abilities, you figure it <laughs> yeah. could have been something like, else there. Mash these buttons. One of these combinations will work. Right? He doesn't have Xor yet, so no, he obviously is missing good. several from his arsenal. Definitely and there blast. was much more to it than just button mashing. There. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> that's that's my that's me playing Invoker. The intention was there, but it, they get the kill. That, that's what again matters. He's still sitting on that Quaswex for the time being, though. The urine queued up. And nice body blocks. They get a kill bottom. That they Vanquish do. Goes down. TB. It's what, second kill of the game. He's farming pretty damn nicely. Top farm so far. He's indeed top farm right now. So, and you look at what Doxok has queued up. He's got the. Or there you go. Okay, foretold. Uh, he's got the drums queued up for huh. his first item, essentially, after the Ring of Acula. That is not your everyday Terrorblade item. It was like no. a small period where TBs were getting back when drums was, like, really you know, strong. Yeah, really strong. Every carry was building it. It was just whoever is getting the most farm, get a drums, because we want that item up as soon as possible every single game. Yeah. Invokers were going drums. You know, it's just, it was just such a good stat item. And TB is a hero that likes stats, so... Put a defiance for uh, Enigma queued up as, oh, bottom lane. That's a Moonlight Shadows. Yeah, TB is not a hero who likes skates, though, and that seems to be what's coming his way. They yeah, are collapsing on him on the minimap. You see Vansker. Can he get here in time maybe for a charge? Quick answer is no. They just came together. Okay, didn't really catch it, unfortunately, but arrow involved, perhaps. Swap, whatever. They got it somehow. No swap again. It's his boxy planet, so <laughs> passing up the swap altogether until later. I don't think he got to, like, level 11 last game. Played it earlier on today in the previous series. Yeah, level one swap. Nothing too amazing about it. It's, I would say, still worth getting a point over, I don't know, one of those second or third points in Vengeance or, or Magic Missile. But uh, ultimately, end of the day, he's not going to have a huge mana pool to play around with swap. So yeah. it's not really hurting him too much. Well, yeah, Enigma, Hood of Defiance. One of these kind of casual hoods here. An eventual pipe, of course, might not be bad. You are dealing with an Invoker being mm -hmm. the biggest thing. He's going to be playing the Aura Carrier, I guess, which is more the uh, old-school style of offlane that we've seen less of on this patch. Getting the, the pipes, getting the mechs and stuff. And they're pushing top lane. The Lions there to defend. It looks like they also have heroes at the bottom. Pushing themselves, trying to make a, an exchange right here for anything about Mickey. Not an easy exchange, EMP Tornado. Doc's not in trouble. He has a Sunder. No, he doesn't because he's dead. Yikes. Too much damage, and the Supernova does get casted off, but eventually the damage was done. Vansker also going down elsewhere. And now Enigma's also caught by Taiga. Magnetize put up, everything thrown out of him. That's three kills just like that for Alliance. It seemed like maybe a base trade, if, or a tower trade, if anything, but no, that was much worse for, for Z. That's what we saw of Alliance versus Empire, where it felt like, you know, they weren't having the, the best start. They, on, in theory, shouldn't be able to win and take these fights, but they just outplay their opponents there. and. Uh, in that case, it was Furzy just getting way too deep under a tower. Phoenix kind of baited the Terra Blade in with that dive. He's like, he dived in, slowed, went on the CM, got CM down to like 25% health. The TV's like, oh, we're going in. I'm going to run in with my Metamorph and try to finish off this kill. And suddenly he's trapped under a tower with Tornado, EMP, Cold Snap, and just feeding away his life. Yeah. So, have to respect the Cold Snap uh, as far as a 
a spell that prevents you from getting Sunder off a lot of the time because of that chain stun coming out from it. Uh, particularly now that he has urn charges. He yep. didn't even have urn charges for that, so it gets worse now that he does. Oh, interesting, by the way. I, I took a look at Invoker and noticing that urn you're talking about, but he actually has a Midas queued up now, and he is committing towards it, so... Uh, you go going a little bit later on, Midas, and we talked about Midas maybe being somewhat of a dead item at this time, but still looking to pick it up, and speaking of him now as well, he's being gone on, the Avalanche connected eventually, there's the swap oh, from yeah. Foxy though. There's the value swap point, that's why you level swap. Yep. Uh, I don't know if Invoker dies there, but it's it's worth having just for some defensive utility. He does have Exor now, so he has access to all of his abilities, and doesn't really need them there, as I was just simply catching Vansker with the supporting cast. They finish him off. So that leads slightly growing. Now 3,000 net worth in favor of Alliance because you also have Koiko, remember, he's quietly almost just farming away at the bottom lane for the time being. And uh, what, did he go to Maelstrom? Double check that. He is going Maelstrom, going it looks Maelstrom. like. Yeah. Top lane once again being pushed by Percy, but oh, another great Tornado EMP combo. Yeah, cold snaps on top. He just doesn't stand a chance. That was so well executed. The Tornado EMP catches out too. He cold snaps the Enigma near him, and meanwhile, Quick has TP'd in and arrowed the TP. So he can't get any spells off. He can't Sunder. Just great execution. I'm so glad Quaswex Invoker has just become more and more of a thing. Like, Thompson showed his true power. Again, yep. I know it wasn't the first, like, he didn't invent it by any means, but as of late, especially with this TI run, uh, really helped bring it back to the scene, and we're seeing so many more Quasex and Vulcan as a result. But I say that because it really allows you know to, to show the true power of this hero. It's more than just about sun strikes hitting for early kills. Definitely that crowd control, especially with the early levels in QW. As you see right there, it, it makes for some powerful crowd control, some powerful EMPs even, and uh, sets up these kills fairly easily. Puts Alliance up 5k gold pretty early on here too. Charge in from Vansker. Did he go too deep? Magic Missile, Wave of Terror. He couldn't even swap this, or don't even need to. Yeah, Vansker overextending a little bit too much, or did he? Maybe this was the play all along, the Supernova. They're not killing it. Oh. We're going to lose Vengeful and the Mirana. The Supernova goes off right there. That was an ambitious attempt to try to kill the egg in the end. Yeah, Mirana could have just ran there, but decided to turn and start right-clicking the egg. Got cleaved down by a tiny tree throw, and that was... Brutal, the DD of Athenians. That's why I did so much damage. I was like, wait, wait a second, how does that tree throw do that much damage? Did he max it? No, <laughs> he just has a DD. That was quite the surprise, I think, for Quakefer there. He was expecting to, even if he doesn't kill the egg, to have more time to run away before he just melts. Yeah. He also saw Terraplay pushing that top tower in the meantime. So plenty taken, however, Invoker farming elsewhere. And especially now with the hand of Midas, you can expect that network to constantly be shooting up for Mickey. I think this is him recognizing he needs to transition into the full triple orb invoker. He needs the exhort for dealing with TP. Uh, the Quaswex is nice for the early to mid game, but ultimately you're hoping that invoker counters TP and that is going to come from the high damage output spells. So Midas will get him all those levels that he needs for exhort. Tiny, the Blink Dagger. They're going to smoke up on the side of Fursi. Try to find Catch something. the Invoker down bottom. That's the ideal dream target for them. I'm oh, sure yeah. they want. They scan forward just in case. Nobody's there. Here charge. Yeah, charge connecting. Another strike. EMP's put down. Mickey, he knows he might be in some trouble. There's a Ghost Walk. I'm guessing they have something. They got something, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They got something. Uh, they He's still might still not running. be enough. He's very okay. fast. <laughs> <laughs> That was, uh, you know, five heroes coming together. You would hope they can get that kill. And suddenly, this gold lead is not the 5k gold lead it once was. It's back down at 2 to 3k. Yeah. Dropping a bit. Terra Blade back on top because of all that, too. So that's, of course, pretty significant. Um, credit for that kill, but still getting plenty out of it. Those drums, he hasn't used any charges yet, but it's just the stats alone, I suppose, is in the aura that it provides. He'll definitely want to use them, particularly around his Metamorph. The movement speed boost is very nice to make sure you can chase down heroes. Combine that with his movement speed talent, he should be uh, actually a bit of a threat in his Metamorph, assuming he's not getting chain stun, which is going to be often the case. Yeah. Uh, Invoker, Venge, Earth Spirit, Mirana, CM, all these heroes with Disables, Lockdown, Control, that is going to force Terrorblade to go for a fast BKB. And yeah, he's got it queued up. He's not getting any Yasha or anything. It's just Drum's BKB. 
Right, I kind of chuckled there a little bit. I'll get to it in a second. Uh, looks like Scripper might be okay. He said, uh, "Remember what I said in saying he is a greedy support player? Yeah, he built a hand of Midas. Ah, oh, as, no. as you do. Crystal the made crystal it. <laughs> They're playing Midas Dota. They're like we're against TB. They want to take it late. We'll we'll do this too. Um, okay. <laughs> why the hell not? I, I, I suppose. Yeah. I, two Midas's is a lot. Is some greed, and that's probably why we're seeing this initial maybe gold swing." back Frozy's way as they are kind of stronger now, but they're feeding away these kills. These pickoffs against a team with double Midas, I feel like they should be playing together as five. Yeah. They have this crazy team fight with Supernova, with Black Hole, we have a TBS Metamorph. If they're together as five, Alliance, they're strong with their levels, but they're not strong with their items because they've invested so much in Midas's. It is allowing Invoker to get towards that Ags, of course, and that really allows Invoker to come online. Can that invoke two seconds compared to the six seconds? Pretty good value there. Oh, but bottom lane, they're pushing it. Quickfa there with the Star Storm, and he's going right into a Maelstrom, or a Mjolnir even, by the way. Uh, he's already committing towards that, it looks like, has a recipe in his backpack. There was a charge up on him, but you see the top lane. Terrorblade putting pressure at that tier two tower, and the charge was canceled, it seems like, down there. So just again, doing a bit of tower trading, but like you're getting at it, it almost feels like the tower trading is maybe more viable for Alliance right now. Yeah, they're kind of, they're the ones stalling out this game at this point. Yeah, TB is happy for this game to go slowly because he wants his BKB as well. Uh, he did actually get the Yash, so he's going Yash to BKB. This is the build I, that makes most sense. Trying to get a catch on Phoenix, but of course with Icarus Dive, not as easy. Yep. But uh, yeah, the, the slow game pace right now seems fine for Alliance given they've got Midas is going, so. Bottom lane, it's a uh, wrap onto the Enigma. Catch the end of it there, the Moonlight Shadow initiation, and Alliance is just hunting wherever they go. Yeah. They're hunting for kills top, mid, bottom, all over the map. The strike, he's got another leap. Nope, Taiga with the stun. However, if we get a stun, it's Avalanche in the face on top of the top, but the Magnetite's again going to be blocked with this barrel roll, Sunray. Taiga knows he's dead at this point, just trying to distract. Prevent them from going further. However, the charge is coming out. Oh, the arrow does force in to stop. Smart play by Koikpa there. Keep him off. But killing Enigma, ultimately losing an Earth Spear with some rotations. Of course, you're fine with that if you're Alliance once again. Oh, absolutely. And not, Mjolnir finished. It's not one of them Midas heroes dying. No, no, they're getting their Midas is off. That's Crystal that's Maiden's down. still alive. We're OK. Yep. He's God. overtaken Earth Spirit and maybe catching up on some of these other heroes like Enigma fairly soon, considering she is a Midas. And she can get there at level 15, has a 150 GPM. And then level 20, that 250 attack speed that we saw earlier. Yeah. That Speaking of a minus value it, yeah. right there, <laughs> extra attack speed. Get that with like a Maelstrom or something for some TP illusion. That sounds juicy. You got the Valkyrie attack speed buff. I mean, wow, I just said that. Oh, God, you got me thinking Han now. I know, Jesus. I keep bringing up Han. <laughs> Mirana attack speed buff. Yeah. Uh, top lane Vengeful. I would think dead unless a crazy swap play. That's not going to happen. Flaps on him. Cold snap cooldown picked up at level 15 there for Invoker. And of course, that's especially with the urine, eventual spear vessel even. It, it, the synergy is crazy. And good luck getting out of those cold snaps. It's going to be pretty obnoxious. See if he upgrades that vessel after the Ags. I'd like, I'd like to see it. Seems like a good idea. Red bottom being charged here. Could be in some trouble. They're heading in that direction. There is Taiga nearby as usual, though, it seems like. So let's see if you can make a wow, play. But Quick Foot going to be jumped. Manages to get out, though, with the leap. Fire Spirit's coming down. We'll connect on one. The Sun Strike is going to. Oh, that was his own teammates. That's right. Anyways, Quick eventually does fall, though. King R pops the Supernova. And that will tick him down. So the Sun Strike was a little confusing for a second. <laughs> it's actually trying to scare them off, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Get them to not chase so hard, maybe. Echo Saber now finished on Tiny as well, though. He's got that Blink Echo combo. And he uses it. Fine, yeah. Instantly. There you go. That's more like it from Furzy. As far as uh, finding some plays themselves now. And, and go back to just the, the item's decision of Alliance and how it's very greedy style. So Furzy needed to take advantage, and they are. At least in this time. How's Enigma doing, by the way? He went to Pipe, it looks like. Yeah, his farm's just, yeah. without the helm for the split push, without the minus, his farm is really slow. He's only 
700 net worth ahead of a Crystal Maiden. He's barely ahead of the Phoenix. This has not been a convincing Enigma performance so far. 0, 4, and 2. He's really struggling to have an impact on this game. Tiny going to bottle up the Hastrian, see if he can make a play with it. They smoke up. I don't think there was vision there for the Dire Side. Doesn't look like it. So it should have been a pretty good smoke, but just a matter of where they go with it at this point. They're thinking about middle lane as Crystal made in. So there's all these towers still up, which make it kind of risky to smoke towards them because of the easy rotations. Bottom. Invoker, he's been down here. And they caught somebody. Looks like Taiga's the one they caught initially, but Moonlight Shadow's helping to keep Taiga alive. The tree does hit still, Taiga. Beefy enough, can he actually roll out of this? The charge is coming, though. Vansker wants it, and Vansker <laughs> will get it. Uh, oh. Vansker should pay for this, though. Oh, absolutely. He'll, he'll I mean, take he's it. Dead. He's bottom net worth. His life is, is worth less than the yeah, Earth Spirit. You so. see the gold change there. Definitely favoring him still, so. Middle lane, though. That's Boxy in trouble. The Sunstrike coming out. Not even necessary. Terribly dead before then. It was just a safety net just in case, so they find Terrible in the meantime, and I'll swap play onto Enigma. Again, he has Black Hole, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> He's just too slow to everything else. Just the Supernova stood no chance, and just like yeah. that, it's a triple kill for Koikva, and they're going to be pushing more objectives now. Rana seems like one of these super versatile cores right now that can just be picked whenever because of the laning flexibility. And even if you're committing from the first two picks to running it in like a side lane core roll, as like Poikva has been doing, uh, I've seen BSJ doing, he's practicing in pubs. It doesn't lose lanes. It doesn't dominate or crush them, but but once you get items going, Mirana does a lot of damage. And, and Alacrity is pretty nice well. too. Oh, absolutely. With the Mjolnir on top of that. Hard and fast, good combination. Take a look at those Wild Wing Rippers Wild in the Wing? meantime. Yeah. <laughs> no action going on. Oh wait. That's now there is. There we go. Just back in time. We didn't miss anything. No. Oh, so. CM, level 15 already? This there early? go, level. 150 GPM, let the money rain, baby. That is a crazy early timing to be level 15 already. The crystal main. He's already got a four staff and going to group up with the team. Yep, CM is out farming Enigma officially. Unofficially. No, yeah, I mean, it's close, it's close. Three, two, one, day. There you go, minus. jumps over. Or use something. Saw that coming. Uh, Phoenix going the Shivas on the other side. But they're going to run into one another. Boxy going to be the target eventually. He swaps out. He swaps Crystal Maiden in. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, dude, you're playing too greedy. Go die, please. Knowing Insania, he called for that. Yeah, I mean, he does have that mentality, especially again, being a support player. But still, now that's two dead instead of just the one. That, uh, yeah, that was a very, you know, they were positive thinking there. That just wasn't going to work out. So a couple of fines. And Terraplay back to on top, but I still, I still continue to look at this this Mirana especially. And I think that, yeah, her damage is going to be intense. But Terraplay, Manta style is almost there, has the BKB. Again, has that drum from earlier still with even a couple of charges left on it. Uh, Terraplay's, with these combo vitamins, he already is starting to get to a pretty dangerous point. You know, the one more on top, whether it's a Butterfly or, you know, whatever it may be, Iascotti. Yep. That's where he really becomes that terror. Yeah, and hitting, like, his... Just getting his third point in Sunder, so it's zero mana cost uh, against like the Tornado EMP is going to go a long way. Getting a level 20 talent can be pretty impactful. Rana, nice talk about kill, a big yeah. kill. Yeah, very useful. 590 oh, gold going right the way of Appeninge. Top lane though, counter kill Enigma. Still the benefit of Furzy, considering how the game's been playing out. Blink Dagger picked up on Invoker, you see right there. So Mickey has better ways to get in and cast that ability. He actually is almost maxed out now on his Exhort as well. So even the Sun Strikes, the eventual Cataclysm at level oh, 20 yeah. is something I to look out for. got to imagine he's going that. The Alacrity Absolutely. damage and speed on a Moran is nice, but it's not a game-changing hero to put Alacrity on. Yeah, Cataclysm, initially, I remember when that when that first was introduced, it was like, it, it felt like one of those kind of fun abilities, but maybe not the most realistic. Um, and it's actually... To kill a Terra Blade. Speaking of Sunstrike, again, not even necessary yeah. there. Um, but I know they swapped around a Talents too, where it, it didn't used to be Alacrity as the other one, it was something else. So maybe we saw people get in the other one. But either way, I've definitely become sold on it over time, that's for sure. We've seen many big plays with it. A lot of the time, it just takes learning how to use it. I think a lot of these 
uh, new spells or new changes. Like I know the Ra Wraith King, when his, got his skeletons out, they were in the game for ages before people started spamming Wraith King. And they were yeah. always ridiculously strong. It's just that people didn't understand how good it was. They weren't playing it. Um, Cataclysm, you have to understand, you need setup. You can't just throw Cataclysm randomly to scout and just expect to hit people. No. You need to use it in a team fight to follow up an arrow or a bench stun. Um, and or like combo it with your deafening blast so that you're pushing people into the cataclysm. Like a big bouldering smash on two yep. or three heroes. Yeah, all of a sudden cataclysm is out and they don't know where to go. They get panicked. Yeah, it's definitely a great tool. So expecting to see that invoker currently. Uh, in fact, he has a level 20 and he does have it. So there we go. See if that comes into play eventually. But right now, again, that 5,000 net worth lead in favor of Alliance. Continues to be the same story, though. You still have a Terra Blade that Yep, it's getting bigger and better for the time being. Um, Alliance did secure Roshan there. Oh, look at that little cutie. Oh, he disappeared. Oh. They had a spider camera. We he tried. Just, he vanished. It happens sometimes. Mech picked up on Enigma, I believe I just saw. Big fight coming. It is. Who do they catch here? That would be King R. As a swap, Phoenix goes down. Mirana keeping her distance. They're going to take out Spirit Breaker as well. That EMP, you can tell, just really scattered the Radiant side. Look like they have any interest in fighting into that one after they lose the Phoenix. Phoenix actually like had a chance to egg there. His egg would have likely died. It was like this small window where he probably thought he was going to get chain stunned and die, and he lived on like 100 health because they just didn't dump enough spells into him. But uh, ultimately, there wasn't really a, a good escape path for him. Priority on Lincoln's this game. You have a Lincoln's finished on Mirana, and Invoker is also going Lincoln's next. So, Interesting. charge. You got uh, yeah. Sunder, obviously, is a big one. Yeah, it's actually fought quite often against Terra Blades. Um, and then charge. It's, it's nice against Spirit Breaker. It just makes his life a bit difficult. At the same time, you'll often use that charge to break the, the Lincoln's. It's not a bad way of doing so. But. They're yeah, looking at this. If we're going late game and TB gets like level 25, some cool down, we need to make sure we have uh, ways to preventing him just having unlimited lives in the fight. Tier 3 is dead. That means those shrines exposed. Can go kill those now if they wanted to. Uh, this Enigma build has not worked out at all. He'd be no. way better off going for a greedier build, going for the late game items. Like he's gone all in on these early mid game items. He's no Black Hole presence now. Yeah. If he had yeah. BKB, BKB Blink is fine, even when there's a Venge in the game. Just because Venge is not always there, and you eventually do get a Lincoln's as well. Yeah, but it, it, trying a black hole against this lineup with no BKB especially, it's you're not getting it off. It's not going to be longer than a second or two. Uh, at, le at least if there's multiple heroes there, of course. So um, It's definitely a rough game for him. As they're kind of clumped up here at the bottom lane. You see they're pushing out. I suppose... Uh, Maybe that's Taiga down there in the area, and it looks like Invoker, so maybe catch one of them. They get a little too greedy. Some Illusion spawn pushing out as the Meteor comes down. It's going to scout with the Illusion, but look at Taiga and Mickey. Uh-oh. <laughs> they did not expect all five to be here. Going to start running, and they will be fine. So suppose time wasted. Yeah, they didn't take any losses, so they'll be perfectly happy with that. Fall back, continue their item progression, work on these Lincolns. The top there, Mirana is going to push in that lane more. Um, the, the networks on the left there is they caught Boxy. I'm guessing that will be a kill this time. I mean, he's God, he is tanky. Very tanky. Swap? Is he swapping Koikfa? No. <laughs> he, he was going for it, I think. I that, guess Koikfa has A, just Lincoln. I was going to say, and has Leap on top of that. Yeah. So uh, that I, I'm pretty sure he was trying to. Koikfa was offering his life. Yeah. Or one, his first life with the Kills, perhaps. Not going to go for it, though. I believe we also saw Vengeful building an axe, however. Speaking of an item that, especially this offlane Vengeful, uh, could be fun to see after the fact. But bottom lane, well, rambling on, you got uh, Magnetize. There's that mech coming into play. It's going to save him as well as the pipe. That's to save the Spirit Breaker. He goes back and, oh, he gets hit, though, with the Boulder Smash. And may end up falling in the end. They kill her spirit, but yes, they'll trade lives. Uh, support for support. That's what happens there in the long run. Middle lane, Murata. Tiny cannot kill her by himself. Urzi holding on for now. Still winnable game for them, even though they are down. Um, they've got this Terra Blade. They'll be able to defend. He's level 18 now, so has that level 3 Sunder. Doesn't have his level 20 talent, but he's very close to completing this butterfly. 
which is then going to reduce a lot of this right-click physical damage coming out, which isn't all that much. Mirana definitely has some, but gets at least a bit of true strike with the the Olnia procs. Okay. Focus much more about the magic damage, but they, they kind of just need Kaida on this TB, but BKB. They don't want to throw too many spells on him that get uh, soaked up by the BKB or that get sundered off. They need to be very careful about when and how they go in. Yeah, Terrible only level 18, though, compared to your level 20 Tiny Team. You have 21 on Marana, 22 on Evoker, so still trying to catch up in the level aspect on top of that. But Tiny, by the way, does have an AC finished. Let's sell Kiros. Vengeful, you see how close he is to that Axe, about 600 or 500 gold away from completing. So just this really bulky build that's bringing the Aura with the Helm of the Dominator once again, but also will have that Ag's effect uh, fighting after death. It's nice to see. Vision down. What does uh, Crystal Maiden have? She's rich, so. Who BKB, knows? how oh, about geez. that? <laughs> that's, uh, Maybe he does get the freezing field damage now. Be able to Possibly. channel a free BKB, yeah. like, that feels pretty good. And on the Radiant side, there's the BKB on Terrorblade and oh, the Pipe on Enigma. That was cute. Tiny also no BKB yet, but has one queued up. So we'll see double slash triple BKBs on Furzy eventually. Just not right away, which is where maybe the, the CM Freezing Field... No, we'll see. It, it's pretty standard to get it as well. Yeah. Been wrapping around for a while now. It's a matter of time before Alliance finally finds the engagement. Insania is picked off elsewhere. But if they find Afterlife, which Taiga will, now he's kind of by himself for the time being. It's a little awkward. Sunstrike, it's not going to be enough damage. Takes about half life. Alliance got very scattered right there. Uh, especially with losing Insania off the bat. I think that kind of threw them off. Yeah. Just getting picked apart kind of one by one this year. Tiger's trying to make plays from the trees and having some success. Yeah, he's delaying them. They, they've been chasing after both the Vengeful and the Invoker up here, so at least he delays the Tiny, I think, was the biggest thing. However, the Nether Strike will connect, and Vengeful does eventually indeed go down. More kills um. going the way of Furzy. He's had up. <laughs> I believe that was the Axe, by the way, almost delivered to Vengeful as he died there. Oh. That would have been fun timing. Extra life, so he'll have it when he's back. As there's the butterfly for Terrorblade, as you were mentioning earlier. So he has that now, and that's that third tool that we mentioned. That uh, does start to make this hero pretty fearsome, if he wasn't already in this game. Um, and he does have some decent lockdown around, you know, in theory with the black hole, but as we've already stressed it, this game is a very difficult black hole game. He ended up even committing towards a full Guardian Greaves. Now he is going to BKB which, again, still won't be the ultimate answer Yeah, because of the swap. So I don't really feel like the Pipe and the Greaves are winning them fights. They're get, having these kind of scrappy engagements where they get these pickoffs. Uh, the full 5-on-5 five five engagements is just not really the approach Furzy's taken and had success with. So that's where the Pipe and Greaves are just not ultra-value items. With a BKB, yeah. you, can just, you can play this split-up style and just use a Black Hole and a solo hero by themselves because you're playing a farming game. So you Black Hole an Invoker, you kill him, great, that's worth it. Same for using on someone like a Mirana. Bottom lane, Mirana. Chrysalis now finishes. You see there the MKB queued up. I'm guessing witnessed that the uh, butterfly was being built, so making a decision there. I'm not sure what uh, Affinage was jumping on him. That may be an illusion. Either way, nothing there. And Alliance is fairly spread out for the time being. Keep an eye on those levels. 23 on both Invoker as well as Murata. So at this point, they're definitely getting 25 first. Yeah, they're getting it at a pretty early stage as well. Invoker's 25, pretty impactful. Murana, same thing. I what do you think Invoker gets this game? The AoE Deafening Blast or the Tornado Cooldown? Uh, probably the Deafening Blast against the TB, but yeah. we'll see. The tornado is really good against TB as well, so it's yeah. like... At the same time, it's usually I feel like that's more of a if you're very defensive, that's a great tool to have at level 25. But I would lean towards the Deafening Blast personally. So, as for Mirana, I would expect the uh, Moonlight Shadow cooldown. But at the same time, I'm seeing a lot more of oh, the Triple yeah. Arrow as of late. It's Are becoming, you? It's becoming okay. more popular. Uh, no, as in like more than it used to be. I still okay. see more Moonlight Shadow. Uh, that's an engagement. Meatballs put down. Deafening Blast. Vansker goes down okay. as a result and. Yeah, that seemed like they were trying to engage on a Mickey, but he had the supporting cast. That's going to be a missile and a boulder smash. However, the silence kicks in 
And King R cannot get away, or he casts Supernova. That's Yay. not going to work. They kill it pretty damn quickly, oh, and they, they also on. catch up to Afterlife. Yeah, crybaby. That's, <laughs> that's worth it right there. That's just It just gets worse and worse for Percy. Congrats. Easy. Apparently. Nothing you can do about this, and there's bottom lane exposed as well, so they're getting several lanes of racks. Top lane is protected by a tier 2 at least, so it wouldn't be the Mega Creep, which is a very similar story to last game, a bit later on, where Alliance kind of close-ish in gold, a bit ahead, win one big team fight, boom, they just take the enemy base. Yeah. Look at that, the preemptive EMP just in case they look to jump with tiny grabs, but not the case, and instead they'll just get the free second racks. So yeah, one after the other, three heroes die, they get just the racks, and now maybe, hey, Roshan's on the list. Because yeah. why the hell not? Yep, they've got a formula to win themselves this game, and they're going to follow it. No need to take any crazy chances. You're up for Rex. You have decent scaling heroes. We haven't seen Cataclysm yet, by the way. There's not really been the opportunity for it, to be fair. No. Yeah. Big fight. Other than maybe like that right one that happened there just previously. But Mickey using a Sunstrike there, so it's going to be on cooldown a little bit longer. Either way, they, they, they kill Roshan. That's an Aegis now for Quake Club. Handed off the cheese as well, so they're gonna just go in. It looks like Vansker immediately swapped away. He's dead off the bat. That's a BKB. Metamorphs is from Terrible. Beating it to Mickey, but Mickey goes walk. He'll be fine. Simply walks it off. And now the BKB's worn off, and all of a sudden, Doxok, not sure what to do. Oh, aggressive swap. They caught Afterlife once again. The magic missile. They're just gonna beat him down. The damage of Quick, but so strong. You can tell he's shaping up for a black hole at the last second. It wasn't gonna work, though. Oops. EMP. Protecting uh, Koikpa. Yeah. Defensive black hole. Don't go on us, please. Yeah. Says Insania. We're all low on health. We just you know, want to have some fun. Chill outside your base. Leave us be. Chill. I see what you did there. <laughs> that was our intention. <laughs> you think, think I can be that witty? <laughs> At this point, yeah. I've right. been awake for like 20 hours here. You got this. So does Alliance, apparently. Yeah, they are looking in firm control after yeah. getting 2 0 yesterday in a pretty close game 2. I don't. I think game one looked a bit one-sided. This has been back-to-back uh, -back stomps so far. Oh, At least yeah. This one, stompy-ish. This one is a bit there. more of an outdraft, too, I feel like. Again, it's specifically, well, I don't know, though. Maybe that's not fair to say, because I think the Enigma, though, is the biggest thing where looking back at the yeah. items and the progression, maybe some questionable decisions there. If he had different items, I think this game would look a whole lot more even, and they would be finding more kills, because you'd... Their, their mindset should be just, yeah, use Blink Black Hole uh, to kill any hero. Don't, if you're not casting Black Hole, if you don't even have the threat of it, then why pick up a Nick? Yeah. That's what it comes down to. There is always the downside of you you put it on cooldown, then your opponents just instantly go push a tower or take Roshan. But that's, you know, you got to play Dota to, to win Dota. You can't just sit back and not use spells because you're worried about putting them on cooldown. Either way, again, this one's still not officially over yet. It's we've definitely seen bigger comebacks, but oh, for sure. Alliance in and they have control. black hole, so they have the big old. <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, yeah. We still go back to that, right? It's like no matter how not impactful black hole's been this game, they still have. It. So yeah, <laughs> there it, is that chance. It could. <laughs> There's just right. so many threats on this dire side. All these heroes are so high level. CM level 22. CM's going to beat all the radiant heroes level 25 at this rate. Uh, what does she get? Jeez, I, I don't even know what CM's 25 well, is. Uh, it's uh, Frostbite normally, duration or Crystal Nova damage? Okay. Yeah, I don't know which one you get here. I'd say normally the Frostbite duration, but eh. Nova's pretty good as well. Uh, yeah. Mirana did get the Moonlight Shadow cooldown, so we're going to see near Perma Invis on this Dire side. AoE Deafening Blast on Invoker as well. Pushing into that Tier 3 Terra Blade. Trying to just deter them as much as possible. Popping that refraction constantly. Over and over again. Mickey. Lincoln's popped. He's getting low. Okay, the tree's throwing. He's barely walking away. He doesn't have the Aegis, remember. I was on uh, Quickfoot earlier. Well, Quickfoot's going to lose it. He just died. All right. To, I think a TB reflection. Well, that works. Terrible, though, in a bad spot now. He's going to pop the BKB. Metamorphosis reflection. He's going all in, baby. They just want to kite this. If they can get away from the TB BKB, this suddenly looks really good. And they are. Look at that. Again, the kite is just so real from Alliance. The BKB is worn off. Now the nice jump to pick off Hentral Spirit off the bat. But Terror Blade just simply melts away. Okay, a black hole. How about that? Well, Eel stops it. 
Only locked him down a couple of seconds yeah. and a triple kill for Quick by the end. The eggs picked off as well, and a little bit of a sign maybe for Fursey, but really the lead is just too much. Yeah. Alliance are playing some freaking good Dota today. That they are. These guys are on point. They're playing well as a team. Some of those, t the tier one tower defenses up top was, I think, the the highlight of the game and where Alliance pulled ahead and really won this game. Uh, there was two team fights in a row where uh, the Invoker rotates up there, the Tornado EP set up, the Mirana then TPs in as well to follow up that Tornado, and uh, those keeping that tier one top alive for as long as they did was very impressive and crucial for them maintaining a, a big lead. Quick was pretty good on this hero. Um, he died this game. Oh, that's... Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Last game he was like 15 and 0. Three deaths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this game 11, 3, and 11. Yeah, he's, he's so great. that's uh, between the two games. I don't know how to quick math in my head, but it's pretty damn good with a back-to-back Murata game. So, I, I, I mean, I don't know if Murata's a hero that you're banning in the first phase, but maybe... Maybe you want to. Yeah, again, I'm double. I have to double check what they've been banning. But either way, it's uh, you might just ban like Mirana or a Spirit just to force Alliance to go true. out of their comfort zone. Even though I'm sure Furzy don't feel like Earth Spirit's a must ban worthy hero. But sometimes you just got to make your opponents do something different and yeah. don't let don't let them get the same opening three games in a row and three O you because you'll you'll feel bad. You'll feel dumb about that. They banned Brood, Chen, and Weaver with their first three bans. Okay. These last, I think, two games, I want to say, they for both games. So, again, those are understandable bans. Yeah, the, they play Chen um, so well in Alliance. They do. Brood, we've we've seen. So Maybe let the Weaver sneak through. Everyone can play, you know, maybe get a, I don't know if they're going to have the first pick or not. Obviously, we'll see. But yeah. either way, it's something needs to change because Alliance right now is playing very, very well. And we'll find out how they're playing. We're continuing to in game number three. Again, I'm Brick CBK, joined by Gods. We got game number three. Here for the reshuffle of madness coming up. $50,000 price on the line here in the grand finals. Best of five. Two nothing for Alliance. Can they do it here?